So it finally may be the time to start going all in on crypto. You might be asking Antonio, why should we be doing that? Well, the Jim Cramer indicator has finally turned on and Bitcoin was actually up over 25% ever since Jim Cramer had told us that Bitcoin and crypto had no actual value, which is even extra funny because not too long ago, he had said he really liked Ethereum and most likely we're gonna see a 50 to 60% pump on Ethereum and then Ethereum actually dumped 40%. So Jim Cramer was bullish, the market tanked, he finally turned to bearish, maybe we're gonna see a market bottom. Of course, I'm just kidding about the Jim Cramer effect. Are you though? But it does seem to happen more often than not, which is kind of scary. So there's a lot that has happened in the crypto market lately. We saw a lot of company going bankrupt, like three Aero Capital and most latest Voyager. So a lot of people lost a lot of money with these companies blowing up. And it's kind of interesting that you might have thought that you were doing the same thing by diversifying to different companies like Celsius, Voyager, Luna, and then they're all kind of just blowing up in your face. And the main reason that is, is all those companies lend each other money. So when one goes down, it forms an abdominal effect that brings all the other ones down. The latest victim was Voyager, which has officially filed for bankruptcy. The main reason they're filing for bankruptcy is because they had loaned out over $600 $150,000 to Three Arrows Capital. And Three Arrows Capital, after the whole Luna Terror debacle and the whole pretty much crypto market tanking, had to fall for bankruptcy, which means they couldn't pay back their loans to Voyager. And then Voyager had so much money loaned out to them that they forced them to fall for bankruptcy. And very interesting, BlockFi, another lender very similar to Voyager, which people held their crypto in and collected some interest rate, actually loaned out some money to Three Arrows Capital. And they foresaw that potentially Three Arrows Capital couldn't pay back their loans and file for bankruptcy. And they got lucky they were able to liquidate all their loans and not having to file for bankruptcy themselves right before this whole thing kind of came down falling. Which if you're a BlockFi older, that is really good and you didn't have your money locked up. So Voyager did get a lifeline which they were unable to take. A company called Alameda Research offered them a 500 million loan. Now the issue with that loan that they offered it, but they could only take 75 million every month. So which means they couldn't take the whole 500 million as a lump sum. So they were unable to use that money to get out of bankruptcy. Now they could have potentially, we don't know their whole stash sheets and all the money they have, they could have potentially have been be able to delay the bankruptcy and maybe it was just a business decision to file for the chapter 11 rather than saving the company. Now a really interesting thing was that is Alameda Research is actually one of Voyager's top lenders, which is the second biggest lenders after three Aero Capital. So that means Voyager had lended this Alameda research company over 350 million USD. And now it's the borrower trying to bail out the lender. So I don't know where this fits in all of the kind of the equation that's going on. Alameda Research might be positioning themselves for potentially to buy out Voyager. Uh, we just don't have the facts just yet. It's a bit of speculation on my part, but we could see something potentially happening in the near future. Now, if you are somebody holding Voyager, a buyout wouldn't be the, it wouldn't be a terrible thing. It potentially could save all the money that you've saved up as whoever buys them out will also collect all the assets that Voyager was holding as well as her dad, of course. And what makes things even more interesting is that Alameda is owned by Sam Bankman Freed, the owner of FTX, and kind of a super villain now in the whole crypto world. He's just going around by every single company that's nearly going bankrupt. So potentially, since you know Voyager did file chapter 11, it could be a chance for Sam to come swoop another one that might be closing to bankruptcy. Now, he also gave a loan of $250 million to BlockFi, kind of helping them out as well. So we will all see when this is all said and done, kind of how it's going to all play out. Now, while if you're a Voyager older, you do have your money locked up and more than likely you're probably not going to see them. Now, it's not definite that you're not going to see any of that money. There is a small chance out there that if Voyager gets bought out or just is able to repay some of those loans are able to return at least partially some of the money that was locked up by all the people, the retail investors like me and you. For me, I actually didn't have any money on Voyager, which was uh, actually very lucky as I do use a bunch of different brokers. I didn't have money on BlockFi. I do have a small amount of money on Celsius, which is currently locked up. Now you might be asking, Antonio, is Celsius the next one to fall? Are they going bankrupt? Currently, they have locked all their withdrawals for the last couple of weeks. 
No one knows a clear answer if you're going to fall for bankruptcy. There's been rumors out there that they were going to fall for bankruptcy, but also it was some good news as well, like they were able to pay back all their loans. Everyone was very worried that if Bitcoin fell under fourteen to $15,000, the Celsius will be liquidated from their loans, but likely they were actually able to collect capital and be able to pay off that loan so they cannot be liquidated, which if you're an owner of Celsius or have money locked up in Celsius, is actually really good news as potentially they may be able to repay back all their loans and return money to their investors like me and you now that probably won't happen quickly it will take time but hey i would rather wait it out and get my money back rather than this company going for bankruptcy and losing all our money and nothing that we can do about it so what can we expect this whole thing to turn around well next week we have a really really important report we have the cpi report which you probably have heard 100 times the cpi report cpi report for the past six months well, the CPI report is very important. It's the Consumer Price Index, which is formed by the University of Michigan, and it shows what our likelihood of me and you to going out there and just buy stuff. Now, this is very important because the CPI index will report a low rating if there's high rates of inflation or high rates of unemployment, which means that, hey, if things cost too much money, me and you, that with the little money that we do have, we might not be likely to spend it just because we can't afford it. I got no money. <laughs> Currently, the CPI report has its lowest rating since 2008 and 2011. So if next week on July 13, we see a positive CPI report where consumers are like, hey, things are not as bad as we might think they are, then we might see a nice rebound in both the stock and the crypto market. Now, there's been just so much word of recession out there and there's just been so much fear that it's kind of hard to expect a positive CPI report so soon. Everyone is worried about a recession and Atlanta GDP Now report shows that we're currently going to be experiencing a recession. They expect a negative 1.5% in the GDP in the next quarter. So what is our sweet Jay Powell going to be doing about all of this? Well, Jay Powell right now, he's just worried about bidding inflation and his committee of bidding inflation. Currently, the market are expecting another 0.75 increase in the federal fund rate, which controls the interest rates. Finally, the Federal Reserve has decided to grab the inflation by the neck and control it rather than having inflation control them so far because all the moves they've made so far have pretty much been just reactive out of inflation. But now they're finally being proactive and actually being extremely aggressive by adding more 0.75 interest rates. Currently, there's about a 96% chance that they're going to increase it by 0.75. And many people might think this is very bearish for the markets, but on the other hand, it might be slightly bullish because the markets might finally say, hey, you know what, Jay Powell, you're finally doing something about inflation, which means, hey, Hey, this might hurt right now, but eventually later on, inflation will cool off and it actually be very good for the markets. So as long as the markets are not cut off guard by some crazy increase of interest rates and are actually expecting a high interest rate increase, this might actually be pretty decent. Now, this all could change depending on the CPI report. If the CPI report is reporting much better than expected, then who knows, it might decrease it to just a 0.50% increase. But currently, 10 out of the 11 federal members are expecting a 0.75 increase. I mean, I just think, imagine me that one guy that's like, hey, you know, inflation is not that bad, let's do 0.50 increase. And then all the 10 other people are like, dude, you're freaking crazy. I just was wondering how that meeting would go. Dude, are you crazy? Recession, recession, recession. We pretty much have heard it all and we just keep hearing how things are gonna get worse, worse, and worse. Eh, recession sucks. But there is one slight positive thing in all of this chaos that we're going on right now. Currently, unemployment is sitting at one of its lowest levels ever, which is just really good. Now, we do have a scare that potentially many companies might start selling off into the future. Like we see seen many tech companies announcing potential sell-offs like Tesla. Even though I do think with Tesla, rather than selling off because they don't want employees and they can't afford them anymore, I certainly think Elon Musk might just want to hire all these kids that he's having. He has nine kids already. I'm like, where does he find all this time between this Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and all the other companies that he's running? Essentially, what we learn from the whole situation of all this company kind of blowing up is that, hey, know your keys, know your coins. So make sure if you do have a lot of coins, if you don't plan to actively trade them, uh, make sure you get an actual ledger, hard wallet that you can store your coins so they just can't get lost with all these companies just pretty much creating chaos around the whole crypto world. And we have to understand that crypto is still a very, very dangerous asset. That's why the crypto has not been a hedge against inflation because it's seen as a dangerous asset, which means that whenever inflation is higher, companies and investments that are considered more risky tend to not do so well because there's no free money flowing to the market. 
because interest rates also raise with inflation. And if you're still confused what interest rates and inflation have to do with each other is that whenever you have an increase of inflation, you have to increase the interest rates so that inflation goes down. And then as inflation goes down, you lower the interest rates. And when you lower the interest rates, inflation goes higher. So then you just have to find a kind of balance that the Federal Reserve kind of struggles with. They have some period of times that they do well, but then eventually the the they get tipped one way or the other and they have to raise or lower one or the other to finally find that balance again. And when you throw in a bunch of free money like we saw in 2020, well, you know, that just doesn't do anything good for inflation. Remember that the market and the economy moves into cycles where we have light, we have darkness, where we have rain, we have sunshine, where we have happiness, we have sadness, where whenever we have prosperity and everybody being happy in an economy, we eventually get a recession. It's all part of life and we can't appreciate the ups until we appreciate the down. Now, remember, if you make money whenever the stock market goes up or down, you know what to do. The links will be down below. Feel free to come to with me live every single day where we're making money no matter where the market goes because we just take advantage of every opportunity that we see. As always, just know that these research videos take me a lot of time, a lot of research to bring it to you guys in a very fast, easy ways for you guys to understand and then edit them. So I appreciate like, appreciate the subscribe and comment. Let me know where, where do you guys think we're heading? We're heading long-term recession. Are we not heading into recession? How long is the bear market gonna last, gonna last for? I appreciate every single comment and I do reply to all of them. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.